Hello, good morning. We are starting with the new lecture series on Theratology. And in this today's lecture, I'll be discussing what is Theratology. We'll try to understand what is death. And before understanding death, we'll discuss what is life. Then we will be able to understand what is death. Then we'll, I will be discussing what are various phases of death. That is, it is divided into two phases, somatic or the clinical death, which is the death of the person at a particular moment and then the somatic or the cellular death, the cell uh, death of individual organs. Then the definition of various authorities, how they define death. So in today's lecture, I, today's lecture I will be discussing the death, its definition, its phases, and why somatic death is necessary to establish because after the somatic death, the organs transplantation can be taken before the molecular or organic death. So starting with the lecture, first lecture on thanatology today. Take care. Hello everyone. I am Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. And we are starting with the topic of thanatology. And this is a new series of lectures on thanatology. Thanatos means death and logi is the study. So basically it means death and death related phenomena which are concerned clinically, medical legally. So thanatology is the study of death and related phenomena. It is a scientific study of death in all its aspects, including its cause and phenomena. It also includes various body changes that accompany death, that is the changes which appear in the body after that and their medical legal significance. Now, starting with the concept of death, we should understand why it is important for us to understand death. But before discussing death, we should understand what is life? Life is defined as presence and integration of three interdependent vital systems of the body. And they are circulation, respiration, and nervous system. And these three are also called as tripod of life because these three pillars are necessary for the maintenance and existence of life. And this tripod of life leads to atria mortis. I'll tell what it means, atria mortis, what is meant by. So the three pillars, the CNS, that is brain, heart, circulation, lungs, that is respiration, they all make life. So these three systems make the tripod of life. So the living body depends upon the integrity of these three vital systems, which are interdependent upon each other and these systems or as I have told you, respiration, circulation, and innervation. 
and this is the interdependence that is the continuous integrity and interdependence is necessary for the maintenance of life now the tripod of life this is also called atrium mortis that means gateway of death because loss of any vital system will lead to gateway of death that is atrium mortis because if one system collapses the other two systems cannot maintain life independently that means the failure of one tripod vital system will cause failure of the other two and this will lead to the death of the individual so that is why these systems are known as atrium mortis that is the gateway of death death's portal of entry now coming to death that what is death death is the end of life we have understood what is life life is the existence of three vital systems and death is the end of life so death is a process then an event we will understand what does this mean except in certain situation where death is instantaneous like bomb blast crushing of head in road traffic accidents and various other examples where death is instantaneous while in other situation the death is a process then an event in a particular moment dying is a chain of events different definitions of death have or we will discuss various authorities what they say about the death death is end of life with extinction of personality one definition complete and permanent cessation of function of three vital systems of the body this is another definition irreversible loss of biological properties of the living matter this is another way of explaining so death is permanent and irreversible cessation of vital function of the heart brain and lungs this says the parek then the muller another scientist say that dying is a process and not a moment in time it starts from the stoppage of vital functions that is three vital systems of the body till completion of the molecular death that is the death of individual organs whereas karl states when the destruction of the brain has been established the individual has died no matter what the state of the rest of his body giving four signs for such a diagnosis deep irreversible coma with fixed dilated pupil and absent cranial reflexes this is number one criteria number 2 no spontaneous respiration number 3 absence of electrical brain activity and number 4 cessation of circulation in the retinal vessels so this these are the four criteria which were given by karl shapiro defines that the death as an abstract noun which may be meaningless to laymen lawyers philosophers and priests but it is very inadequate as biological description he says that it is a process a chain of event starts from the moment of death to the complete disintegration that is complete decomposition this organ organic matter into conversion of inorganics is matti ne matti ho jana hai so this is the definition by the this scientist 
that complete destruction, starting from the chain of events, clinical death to complete destruction. There is no moment in time at which it occurs. Moment of death is a biological fiction. Whereas the truth is quite different. Biologically, we die in bits and pieces. As we are concerned with the biological properties of living matter, so the death can best be defined as irreversible loss of biological properties of living matter. This may involve organ as a whole or its component parts. So death is not a moment, but a continuous process and it's a phenomena, not a moment. On these bases, two phases of death are observed. Thus, death was classified into two types, death of the body and death of the organs. So, the body may be dead, but organ may still survive in the same body or in an other unit of life. So there are two phases of death. The first is the extinction of personality, that is the immediate signs of cessation of vital process or somatic death. So first phase is somatic death. And second is progressive disintegration of the body tissues after the somatic death has taken place or molecular death or cellular death. So first is somatic death and second is molecular death. Somatic death is also called as systemic, clinical or legal death. Now somatic death, this is irreversible loss of integrating and coordinated functions of the organ as a whole and it is referred as somatic death. And this is the stage of biological disintegration in which the law is interested. That is the time of clinical death. Its recognition entitles a medical man to certify death has occurred. Now the molecular death the death of the component parts of the organ or the individual cell. It is different from the death of the individual itself. Somatic death has occurred, but the organs may still be alive for a certain period of time. It is the death of individual organs and tissues which persisted individually after the somatic death. The time factor depends upon the resistance of the cell to stain the insult of hypoxia or anoxia. Molecular death occurs over a period of time. Initial changes occur due to metabolic dysfunction and later from the structural disintegration. We know that the nervous tissue, nervous tissues dies rapidly brain in three to seven minutes, muscles up to one to two hours. Similarly, the other organs, we know that the integrated and coordinated functions of the organ as a whole, when they are lost irreversibly, the individual life in the organ can be demonstrated. We have practically seen as student of the medicine in first year, second year in the physiological lab, we have studied in because in early hours of death the striated muscle the skeletal and voluntary can be made to contract by mechanical and electrical stimuli sweat glands and people can still respond to pharmacological stimuli people constrict with pilocarpine and dilates with atropine rhythmic contraction 
is an inherent property of the cardiac muscle. So you can keep the frog's heart beating after removal from the body. Now this is the basis of organ transplant, organ transplantation. That we first have to establish the clinical death, that is the somatic death. Then after that, we can take the organs when they are still alive for the transplantation. So this presence of life in the organs after the somatic death became the basis of organ transplantation. But the time for these properties soon run out and it is that time during which the organs are removed and transplanted or they are kept in storage to be transplanted later. The persistence of biological properties of living matter in the component parts of the organ which makes organ transplantation possible. So the legal certification of death depends upon the diagnosis of somatic death. And, and the diagnosis of somatic death is necessary to establish before the removal of organs for transplantation. And the guiding principles for the diagnosis of somatic death, they are that the clinical interest is superior than the preservation of the isolated cells or the organ. Determination of death is to be based on clinical examination. And during transplantation surgery, death should be certified by two doctors who are not related with the transplantation team. So the summary of today's lecture is that we have discussed and learned about what is life. And we have defined what is death. And we have discussed views of various authorities about the definition of death. We have also learned about the phases of death. We know that there are two phases, the somatic and the organic or the cellular death. And we have learned the basic principles which are involved for the organ transplantation. That is, we should certify first clinical death before taking organs for transplantation. We have understood that somatic death should be established before organs be removed for transplantation. So this is the key. So thank you very much. This is all about today's first lecture on thanatology. Take care. Allah Hafiz.